by the way, it was my brother's birthday recently, and instead of me giving him a gift, he gave me a gift. It's a new stole. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that, isn't that nice? Appropriate, appropriate to the uh, hunting season, because it says uh, it's a John Deere stole. It says nothing runs like a deer, especially when you're shooting at it. Yeah, OK, all right, OK. So, all right, just wanted to acknowledge that my brother is so generous. I have a lot of use for this. Anyway, Pastor Ergens is bringing the message today, and we look forward to that uh, this morning. And uh, prepare the way through his love. Lord Jesus, you are our Savior and our salvation. Teach us to wait patiently for your coming. We live in repentance, that we may prepare for your coming. Holy Spirit, John the Baptizer was sent to call all people to repentance and to prepare the way of the Lord, to prepare for the Jesus, the Messiah, that we might be saved through faith in him. Help us to see others with the compassion of Christ Jesus and to follow him to the glory and praise of God. Almighty God, you alone are worthy to be praised for you sent your Son, the Messiah, to take away our sin and to restore a right relationship with you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, and faith in him, you have given us the promise of eternal life. Teach us to rejoice in you as you humble as your humble servants. Forgive us our sins that we may know the joy of your presence. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you who do truly repent and believe in him the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last Sunday we lit the first candle of Advent, the candle of prophecy. Today we light the second candle of the Advent wreath which is called the Bethlehem Candle. Jesus was born in an ordinary little town in a stable full of animals. He comes to us today wherever we are, in ordinary places, through ordinary people. God sent the star to proclaim Jesus' birth above the little town of Bethlehem, to show others the king was born. Today, the Holy Spirit fills our seemingly ordinary lives with his light and peace on the weary road. Our reading for today is from the fifth chapter of Micah, verses 2 through 4. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from, a, from of old, from ancient days. Let us pray. Almighty God, everlasting Father, Father you foretold that through, through the little town, town of Bethlehem, the king of kings would be born, and his rule would have no end. Turn our hearts toward you, that through faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, we may prepare the way for your coming, and know your loving kindness in our lives now and forevermore. Amen. The first reading is from Malachi, the third chapter, verses 1 through 4. See, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way for me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like a fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the descendants of Levi, and refine them like gold and silver, until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in the days of old and as in former years. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Philippians uh, chapter 1, verses 3 through 11. I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you. Because of your sharing in the gospel, gospel from the first day until now, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to think about this way about all of you because you hold me in your heart. For all of you share in God's grace with me both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. 
For God is my witness, how I long for all of you with the compassion of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may overflow more and more with knowledge and full insight to help you determine what is best, so that in the day of Christ you may be pure and blameless, having produced the harvest of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the fifteenth year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judah, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip was ruler of the region of Iturea and Triconitis, and uh, Lysanias was uh, ruler of Abilene, during the pre high priesthood of Annas and uh, Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, uh, son of Z uh, Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan, proclaiming the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the, one, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight. The rough ways made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. The word of the Lord, the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. How do we prepare the way for the Lord's coming? How do we prepare uh, the way for the Lord's coming in our lives? It hasn't changed over uh, 2,000 years. We're still trying to prepare the way. Truth is, I haven't gotten all my uh, decorations up. It's going to take a little while, I think. Maybe this afternoon, huh? It's always this afternoon or tomorrow afternoon. We'll see. Outward, uh, is it about out outward change in action, or is it inward change, our heart, soul, mind, and spirit that we're called to? Now, I'm going to 
bring up stuff uh, that uh, is pretty elementary um, and you all know anyway, but some people don't. And so I'm going to bring this up. Uh, humanism says that people are basically good and that they are corrupted only by outside influences, which is sweet because then we can do whatever we, well, we can, we're basically good. And so we just make a few mistakes and that's okay. And we just have to kind of balance out the scales, make sure that we have more good things than bad things that are going on, you know? And, uh, and it's only uh, our center of the universe is our actual lives, how we see the world. Yes, we're created good. We were created in God's image, but we sin. And we wanted to be like God. We, we uh, wanted to know the difference between good and evil. It says in Genesis 3.16, God said, uh, eat freely of, of every tree of the garden, but the tree of knowledge and of the good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. And what took place was a spiritual death. We wanted to be like God. We wanted to know the difference between good and evil. Physical death came after that as a consequence of sin. But through faith, we're forgiven. In the Old Testament, it was through sacrifices that they were forgiven, the faith in God. In the New Testament, after Christ came, it's faith in Christ. By grace, you are saved through faith in Jesus Christ. Why do I lay all that stuff out? Because some people are still confused today. And I, I receive uh, publications every once in a while. And uh, in those publications, it's interesting to see the, the, the world view. There's one, fel uh, one person that said, uh, this is a pastor, uh, that the promised Messiah's uh, coming of God's kingdom is uh, to herald an upheaval of political, socioeconomic, and religious systems that oppress God's people for hundreds of years. Jesus said, my kingdom is not from this world. If it were, then, um, then he could call upon legions of angels, and he decided not to do that because his kingdom was not of this world. So uh, we're, we're called uh, to, to uh, change our lives, yet there's a wholeness of freedom and, and uh, justice takes, that takes place um, that only Christ knows. In another uh, devotion given by a pastor, it was very interesting, they the, um, some of you young people will know Third Eye Blind, uh, Closing Time. They use that as an illustration. And I'm like, I remember listening, uh, hearing Third Eye Blind. And you know, what, you know what the song's about? I know who I want to take me home. I know who I want to take me home after Closing Time. And they were talking about uh, the, end, uh, the, the end is a new beginning, and this is what Christ has done. Odd, odd stuff. You know, there was a pastor that walked into a, a bookstore. It's not in this area. I don't know where it was in, in the United States, but they walked into a bookstore, and uh, they were looking through the books, and they saw the fiction aisle, and uh, they saw a Bible, and he, w he was astounded that the Bible would be in the fiction aisle. And so he took a picture of it, and he put it on his social page, and, um, and then it, it kind of went viral. And, um, and the store found out about it, and they, they uh, uh, apologized for putting the Bible in the fiction aisle, and uh, they put it in the appropriate place, which uh, I'm sure probably the religious section, something like that. And, um, and so uh, do we look at the Bible as something that's, you know, a nice story, something that has nice ideas, or do we look at it as something that grounds us, that centers our lives? that gives us purpose, direction, meaning. Because when we, the way that we look at, at the world uh, changes when we see who really is an authority. I, uh, I asked my brothers if uh, people are basically good or, or bad, and they're both lawyers, and they said, oh, people are basically good. I'm like, what? <laughs> you guys are lawyers, you know? One does family practice, and he, he tells me, he never tells me names or anything. He tells me some of the things that he goes through. And I said, <laughs> I've, I've heard of quite a few divorces, and it's not a pretty thing. It's not a pretty thing. Are people basically good? We, we were created good in God's image, and yet we sin. I'll tell you, every single day, and here, what do I know? I'm, I'm a young'un, right? Whatever. But... Every single day I find, uh, the only way that I can find peace is when I, I find myself on my knees in the morning saying, Lord, forgive me for all my sins. You know, cleanse me because I can't do this on my own. When I realize my limitations, that's when God starts working in my life. 
realizing that, that we can't do it on our own, realizing that God has something more in mind. For Malachi, Malachi means in Hebrew, my messenger or his messenger, God's messenger. That's what his name means. And he says, uh, he says to the people, see, I am sending my messenger to prepare my way, the way for, before me. And the Lord whom you will seek will suddenly come to his temple. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand as he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire, like foolish soul. See, the priests of Levi were actually, uh, the, the, Le the, the Levitican priests were, were actually uh, sacrificing to other gods. They were doing other things that they shouldn't have, and they were mixing that all together. And God said, these sacrifices are, are no longer pleasing to me. Follow me. And that's what Malachi is doing. He's calling them back. He says, follow, follow the, the one true God. Then when that takes place, the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord. As in the days of old, as in former years, the Lord is a jealous God. He guides our lives. He calls us back time and time again, even in this day as we prepare for his coming in our lives. As I was uh, preparing this, I thought, you know, how many times have I heard this from a pulpit, the same message that I'm giving you? And I, don't, I certainly don't want to bore you, but, you know, when I visit people, um, what I see is, is that uh, the only peace that they ever find is when they, they hear that they are forgiven for their sins, and they find um, a reason for living in Christ. It's when they give up all of their, their, the things that they hold on to so tightly, and they say, Lord, do with me what you will. Change my life. Guide me so that I might know a peace that passes all understanding. Jesus says in John 14, Peace I leave you with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give, uh, give it to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not let them be afraid. In June 19, uh, 2014, actually, in June 2014, uh, Hunter Gandhi strapped his seven-year-old brother Braden to his back uh, and was going to walk 50, uh, 40 miles with him. In the midst of heat and rain and muscle fatigue, he was going to uh, do this to bring awareness to cere uh, cerebral palsy. And it was called the palsy swagger. It was to uh, help people understand the difficulty that others live in the midst of. He said at the 30-mile mark, he said uh, they uh, had lost uh, their energy. They, they were ready to quit. They were exhausted. And the only thing that, that kept them going were, were those people that were praying for them. Isn't that something? We're lifting them up in prayer. They could feel that, and they didn't, they didn't want to quit. Hunter uh, is, uh, carried his 50-pound brother the entire way during that swag. And as he recounts that, he, he helps us to realize that Christ carries us. When we cannot uh, carry um, ourselves, Christ carries us. He gives us hope. Huh? He's there to give us strength as we meet the next day and every, every challenge that each day brings. In confirmation, we started talking about the ninth commandment. The ninth commandment is, you shall not covet your neighbor's house. And uh, during... Um, during getting, getting ready for Christmas, I said, so what do you want for Christmas? Oh, they had a nice list of things. It was great, you know? So, um, so we went through that list, and, and in the midst of that list, I, I said, well, what are your wants, uh, difference between uh, wants and needs? And let's just go through a few. I said, food and water. They said, oh, well, that's a need. And cell phone. Oh, well, they didn't know so much about that. <laughs> that's kind of a need, they thought. Good looks. One of them said, I already got them, so I don't need them. <laughs> yeah. I said, for you, it's a want. <laughs> Something to wear. One of them, kind of a little daring, said, you know, I don't, think I, need, uh, I don't think I need anything to wear. And I said, well, stand outside for 15 minutes without anything. Tell me if you need it. <laughs> Designer clothes, they decided that was one. Oxygen, a need. Athletic cap uh, ability, they... Most of the teenage guys said, well, yeah, that's kind of a need, I think. <laughs> Medical and dental care is kind of interesting. They weren't sure if it was a want or a need, because not everybody has it. Television, 
Well, that was a tough one too, but they decided it was probably a want. Bathroom facilities, the guys were ready to give that up right away. <laughs> I said, no, you need that, you need that. Vacation time, a want, stamp collection, a want, places to live, uh, a need. Pizza, that was a tough one too. They couldn't give that one up. And then it came to someone to love and someone who loves you. And they couldn't decide if it was a want or a need. But we all need someone that, loves, uh, that, that we can love and someone who loves us, even if that one is God who loves us. It's a need. It's a need of the most basic order. And then, of course, God. We need him more than anything. Huh? If we read any of Luther's writings, he says time and time again, he's nothing without him. It's in him that we find meaning. In our lives, we do not have to worry about anything. In everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, we can make our requests known to God. He gives us a peace. It's a good way of looking at life. Walking through life without anxiety, telling God our needs, and being thankful for all that he's given us. He surrounded us by a great cloud of witnesses that we might know his truth. The Bible is more than fiction, let me tell you. And here's the beauty of it. Ask yourself, how many times has God been faithful in your life? And as I recount in my life, he's always been faithful to me. I'm the only one that's let him down. I came upon a really great quote. Like every promise, the space between its utterance, the utterance of the promise, and the fulfillment is still that it has to be realized. So the promise in its utterance and its fulfillment is, is uh, yet, uh, yet that it has to be realized. Isn't that the way it is with every one of God's promises? He says, uh, you are my child. He calls you by name. He, um, he, he says, I have an inheritance for you. He says that um, uh, he, he calls us to himself time and time again so that we might know his forgiveness in every aspect of our lives. And yet sometimes we don't feel as if that, that is immediate in our lives. And in the midst of that, uh, between the utterance that we see in Scripture and its fulfillment in our lives, we wait in anticipation of what he's doing. It's a beautiful thing because that's what a life of faith is all about. In our lives, we're called to something a little bit different. We're called to live our lives in the midst of, of Christ's love. Uh, in Ghana, there is a proverb, the lizard is not as mad with the boys who threw the stones as with the boys who stood by and rejoiced over its fate. If I were to unpack that a little bit, he's not as mad at, uh, as, uh, at the boys that killed him as those who rejoiced over his death. And so it is uh, in our lives, we're not to take joy in anyone's uh, failings. We're, we're to take joy uh, when they succeed. Now, um, so I'll bet some of you like funniest home videos. Don't raise your hands. <laughs> and uh, and I, like, I like it too sometimes, but I, 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 it's usually me that I, I, I identify closest with the people that are getting hurt because I've been hurt so many times, cut by chainsaws, all that stuff. So I'm thinking, you know, poor guys, it's going to be hours of surgery, you know, <laughs> or his whole life's changed. Sometimes we, we rejoice in, in someone's faith instead of uh, rejoicing in, in, uh, when, in their little victories. If it's a, a neighbor that we sympathize with, that we like, then we come to their aid. But if it's someone that we have trouble with, then our natural uh, tendency is to secretly rejoice. Proverbs uh, warns us, do not gloat when your enemy falls. When they stumble, do not let your heart rejoice. Instead, Jesus says that we should show love in action. When we love our enemies and pray for those who persecute us, by doing so, we imitate the perfect love of our Lord. We're called to be God's cho uh, chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothed in compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, patience. Not that we are any better, but that we realize we're humble servants. 
Prepare the way, he says to us. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And it starts right here. It starts in our hearts when we say, Lord, we can't do it on our own. Forgive me my sin. Guide my life so that I might know a better way, that I might re not rejoice in, in people's failings, but that I might encourage them in their faith. Prepare the way through his love because he always carries us. So be it, Lord. Amen. If you have heard God's word, will you join with me now as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. I am conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, He broke the bread, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look down upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.